What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name's Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're getting an ISPO as well as a public testnet update from the Matera team. Now, I've had Daniel Sampson here, their co-founder and CEO, on the channel multiple times to dive into what Matera is. If it's your first time hearing about them, they're an index protocol giving you quick and easy access to multiple Cardano native assets from a single platform. Let's go ahead and jump right on in here. Let me go ahead and bring up today's guest, Daniel. Welcome aboard. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Farid. Uh, I'm doing good. Really excited to be here back again. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to have you on here. Um, as I was just explaining to the viewers, if you guys have missed our first few chats, please go ahead and check those out. A lot of really good information coming in from Daniel um, about the ISPO, the testnet, which I think is going to be a huge piece today. And then we're also going to be talking a little bit more about Project Catalyst here as well. Now, before we go in any further, Daniel, um, you've already sort of introduced yourself here. I won't sort of bore us with that minutia, not to say that your background is boring by any means, but again, you're you're now a, a, returning, a, a returning guest here. So for anybody who just hasn't heard of Matera, can you give us just the, the quick scoop on what Matera is and how it's different in terms of providing exposure to multiple assets here in the Cardano ecosystem? For sure. Uh, well, we we have been building in the ecosystem for over two years now, and what we're doing is a decentralized platform for asset management. What we do via our platform is that we create instruments that work similarly to ETFs in the traditional finance that give e easy access and exposure to a wide range of Cardano native assets. Um, how it works is that the user provides liquidity into an instrument and in return he gets uh, an index token that basically is like a multi-asset uh, LP token. Right, uh, you provide liquidity. We represent uh, the, the the underlying liquidity through this LP token, and you can uh, burn that token for the underlying assets at each moment. Uh, the instrument is a little bit more complex. It it follows the strategy set by a portfolio manager uh, in the testnet that we will be looking at later in the video. Uh, we have launched two different portfolios and we serve as portfolio managers. But ideally, as the platform roll, rolls out into mainnet, anyone could be able to be a portfolio manager and offer an instrument. Um, I'll, I'll get more into the details of how rebalancing works and everything like that when I show the, the test network. Thank you, and I appreciate that. The testnet is currently available at test.materaprotocol.io. As always, links down below or in the show notes. Now, before we get to the juicy stuff, which of course is the testnet, there's an ongoing ISPO. I make you partner pool. Thank you for onboarding me um, and supporting fellow stake pool operators here. Now, I believe the ISP will be wrapping up. I think it's around epoch number 491, if I'm not mistaken. We're about 60 or 70, maybe even closer to 80% of the way through the ISPO now. Um, for people that are delegating either to the DAP stake pool or just even any other of the 14 um, partner pools, can you give us an update as to how things are progressing? But then also the biggest answer or the biggest question I get is, how can we claim the tokens? Yeah, so our ISPO ends on Epoch 493. So we're about seven epochs out at the time of this recording. Um, it has been doing great since the beginning. We are right now sitting at 27 million ADA. It goes up and it goes down a little bit each day. Um, we have 15 partner pools. And like you mentioned, your pool is one of them. And we have in the main pool over 900, just a little bit over 900 delegators. And overall with the partner pools, we have a little bit over 17,000 wallets, which will be claiming Metera, which hopefully will be claiming Metera. Um, what we have been doing is that we're, we have been tallying all of, uh, all of our Metera distribution through the ISPO, and we have made that link public. I'll share it with you so we can add it into the video. Uh, we have distributed around 30, well, we are, to distribute from the ISPO around 35 million Metera. And we are still exploring different options on how distribution should work, but definitely users will need to claim their Metera based on the vesting schedule that is attached to the ISPO. We have been talking a while back with Techmedio 
um, which is another project in Cardano. So maybe we'll do the distribution via tech media, or we, with, with uh, a lot of the tech that we've developed, we could also be creating our own claiming platform right from the Metera webpage. All details will be made available, but uh, nevertheless, users will have to claim the, the, the tokens by connecting the participant wallet or, or the wallet that has staked in the ISPO. Perfect. I appreciate the update on that front there. So it looks like the users will have to take action here. It's not going to be airdropped um, similar to other ISP. So I do want to just be clear about that if, if Daniel didn't make that clear enough. Um, okay. Sure. Now that we've got, I think, the introductions out of the way, let's get to the to the best part here, which I'm most excited about because, number one, I get to take my hands off the mouse and let you drive here. But number <laughs> two, it's, it's the reveal of the public test net, right? So um, the show's over to you. Let me go ahead and share your screen here. Can you just maybe walk us through the entire platform from A to Z, you know, mm -hmm. highlighting why you guys have designed the platform as you have? And then, of course, diving into, you know, what makes up these indices and how they're weighted, rebalanced, et cetera. For sure. Um, so, OK, let's get started. I'll get started by saying that at the moment, this is not completely open to the public. We do have a forms where you can register and send us your preprod address. We are doing a, a rollout uh, with new users in, into the, the testnet because we're trying to hash out and, and stress out our system before we go into the public. That should be out in the next two weeks uh, into the public. So um, at the moment, like users that are whitelisted should go into test.meteraprotocol.io. And uh, I'll show an example of someone not being whitelisted. It will pop up, contact us to get access. But if I were to connect a wallet that is whitelisted, which I have prepared right here, then you should be able to connect into the platform um without a problem right there okay so we've created this home section uh it's important to mention that um users the first thing that you should do as soon as you enter the testnet is navigate into the faucet okay um at the moment we require people to provide liquidity within the underlying assets of the instrument in the right proportions. Um, we understand this is a huge pain point for the user. And for that, we have created a catalyst proposal that works with a DEX aggregator that will remove this process uh, in mainnet. But at the moment, we're trying to stay true at, at how things work. We could be simulating an ADA to native token swap, like we've seen some other people do in the ecosystem, but we are doing the, the real experience of things that we have right now. So here's the faucet. If you have your wallet connected, you can add and request uh, tokens from the faucet. Um, so in the home page, we have a section for featured portfolios. Right now, we only count with two portfolios and more portfolios with partners are coming to the testnet pretty, pretty soon. So keep an eye out. And right here, you can see general information about each portfolio. Uh, the TDL, what's the price change, and which are the assets uh, within the instrument itself and the weights. Um, if we go into Discover, we this is a page that shows very similar information that, than the home page. But as we grow in portfolios, what we'll add here is a section to filter portfolios in different categories like DeFi, RealFi. So you can start sorting, uh, you can start sorting all of the portfolios within the platform. So let's go to the fun part, which is actually buying into an index. You can either buy right from here in any either the home or the discover or we can navigate into the portfolio page what you'll see here is general information about the instrument a price chart uh, how many holders and what is the entry fee collected by the portfolio manager and more information about the underlying assets here we start going into more in depth about the how the platform works here in this table, we can see each asset. We can see our integration with Cerberus to provide the ratings. So people have more information about the underlying assets. And we have two tables. 
The target weight is the weight set by the portfolio manager. So this uh, column here shows the intended strategy by the portfolio manager. And the actual weight shows what are the actual weights of the underlying assets within the instrument. Remember that what we have is a basket with a lot of tokens and different tokens within, and they have prices that are currently changing. So it's obvious that actual weights are always shifting around, like every couple of minutes, every second, depending on, on the market. Um, so what we've created, and, and you can navigate into our Gitbook to see more information about our rebalancing mechanism, is that when you buy into a portfolio through here, you say, okay, I want to deposit 1,000 ADA into this portfolio. And we'll tell the user, okay, uh, what we need is for you to send us 95 AGIX, 2000 book, so on and so on, right? Um, but as you can see, percentages, what we do with our balancing algorithm is that we calculate based on the input of the user, the optimal transaction that balances the portfolio, or at least uh, gets the actual weights as close as it can with the transaction it's building to the target weight set by, by the portfolio manager. And this also happens when you burn an, 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 uh, an MTK, right? If we have a super overweighted asset because it suddenly had a, a spike in price, right? When people burn their MTKs, we'll just push out a lot of that asset to get the weight down closer to the target in the, intended by the portfolio manager. Of course, this is a V1. We are uh, working with our inner team and with DX5 to give capabilities to the platform and the instrument itself to self-balance, and that will most likely come in, in a V2. But at the moment, uh, we are really prioritizing security. Um, when a user provides liquidity into the instrument, uh, he's the only one that has access uh, to the underlying assets. So the portfolio manager can only change the target weights, but never has access to the underlying assets. For the instrument to be self-balancing, it means that the portfolio manager could trigger something that has access to the underlying assets. Um, so right here, we'll continue with the transaction. We'll click confirm and right there. We are missing some tokens to participate right now in the testnet. So we can click on go to faucet. It would auto fill what we need. And we just click on confirm and it will send assets directly into our, um, into our uh, wallet. Uh, for, for the test, for the video purposes, let's try with a smaller amount. Um, no, it seems I don't have snack right here. So let's wait for that to come or we can even try to deposit into another MTK. Okay, so we click on confirm. We have enough assets to continue with the transaction. We have a transaction summary. This is what we're depositing and the value in ADA. This is the portfolio manager fee, which is paid in the LP tokens that will be minted and go directly to a portfolio manager. Right now, this portfolio is set at 1%. And this is how much I should expect to receive, 98 LP tokens. So I click on confirm. It would load as it builds the transaction. I'll get the pop-up and let's just sign the transaction. Now the transaction has been uh, sent. Um, we work similarly as ADX works. We have a batcher in the middle that receives the orders and starts processing them. So uh, what we're seeing here in the orders page is the batcher going through the different stages, receiving the order, indexing it, and, and, and sending it. Uh, when it's in this status, we can directly cancel the order from here. We won't be doing that at the moment. And right now we just have to wait. It, this will take based on, on the blockchain, uh, one, a minute or two. 
the 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 status will will change directly from here and we can also see the complete status and how much we deposited into the transaction and which are the underlying uh, um, tokens that were sent in the transaction um yeah so let's wait for that to finish in, mm -hmm. in the if if i can continue be uh, as as these processes like i said we have a catalyst proposal and we are putting these banners for people to see um we have been speaking a lot with different dex aggregators in the ecosystem so what we'll ideally do is we'll just connect the dex aggregator with the user and our instrument so the user will just provide ada the dex aggregator will make swaps uh in in the background and and will just deliver the mtks back to the user which in my opinion and i think everyone's opinion will be a much better user experience and uh we are currently working on that integration at the moment so regardless of the outcome of the catalyst proposal which i invite everyone to vote for us and support us we will be delivering this feature because it's really necessary yeah, so, um, I, and I want to make sure that maybe this is what you just mentioned with the proposal. Um, when you were going through there, you were able to use the faucet, and I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, I'm going to pop us, you, you don't have to stop sharing, I'm going to remove it, but I can always bring the, the screen back up here. So, as you were you were creating um, liquidity, or you're adding liquidity, I should say, to the portfolio, you actually had to supply the underlying assets. Am I correct in understanding that with the Project Catalyst proposal, you guys will be working to sort of remove that step from the end user's plate and deal with that on your own? Because I think, again, one sort of hurdle there, right, is the fact that people on the mainnet would have to either already own these assets or go and buy them on the open market, right? So I think it would be awesome for me as an end user to say, hey, here, I have a thousand ADA. I can go ahead and put that into the portfolio and let you guys go ahead and actually deal with the purchasing of the Cardano native assets and then injecting that into the portfolio. Is that understanding correct? Yes, that, that's completely correct. What we'll do is that users could either provide some of the assets right and could also swap some of the assets any combination of that but the best experience would be the user just to come with ada and we have a dex aggregator which makes all the necessary swaps and we just deliver back the the lp token back to the user um also please take into mind that each of these index tokens right it's it's its own cardano native token so this this means that there's a secondary market to be created for each of the index token so one of the things that we do plan on working on is also facilitating uh the the, the selling you as an lp token owner uh, selling it to another user for maybe a premium. Remember that uh, th there's there's a lot of hurdles in the Cardano ecosystem. Like if you've ever used the Dex Hunter baskets, if you try to swap five tokens, you go through five different batcher fees, right? Uh, which that seems to be solved in some capacity through the order book at Axo and some other order book DXs in in the ecosystem. Um, so we do see there is a huge potential in having people mint the empty tokens and just facilitating the swap from the owner to the user that wants to buy and adding things like yield for people that are providing liquidity and empty case and a lot of things we have planned out. Um, we have gone through a lot of iterations of the, this platform, right? We initially had a, a Haskell or a, a Bluetooth uh, source-based um, like platform. We ended up uh, completely shifting around to Aiken. We have understood a lot more about our product as time has gone through and we have developed. And now we have a really nice grasp of what we're able to achieve with time and what are the steps that we need to take to provide a fully decentralized platform and a fully secure platform. I appreciate that input there. Um, one other thing real quick before we dive back into the test and hopefully the uh, transaction will be completing soon here is yeah. the 
Minting in the burning. So you mentioned earlier from a security standpoint, asset managers don't actually have access to the underlying funds. All they can do is change the weights. That makes sense. If they're not actually, you know, putting up the 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 tokens in there, they probably shouldn't have the ability to, to pull them out or, or to shift them around. Um, so let's say I provide liquidity to the protocol or I provide assets to one of the portfolios and then the weights change drastically. When I go to burn my LP tokens in order to receive the underlying assets, I assume at that point and I pull out, it'll be based off of whatever the current weighting is, right? So there is a scenario where I could put in X amount of tokens, but when I actually go to withdraw them, I'm not receiving the same amount of tokens that I put in. Um, is that correct as well? Yes, I mean, that's basically most of the cases, if not all of the cases. The amount of tokens that you provide when you enter an instrument will, I won't say 100%, but most likely will not be the, the same amount of tokens you get uh, back. The, uh, this doesn't mean that it's not the same value, right? Uh, I mean, we can if we can put up the screen with the with the testnet. This has this was confirmed uh, a couple of, of minutes ago. Um, so if we go into this portfolio and we sell right all of our tokens, this is how much we'll be receiving, right? And if we look at the price in ADA, like the value in ADA that we're receiving is the, is the total of the amount of tokens that we're burning times the price, right? This is what we're getting back. So price is always protected and based on the, on the representation of price. Um, the price is just easily calculated dividing the, well, calculating what's the ADA value of the underlying assets divided by the amount of LP tokens that have been minted, right? So uh, you will most, unless the portfolio is 100% balanced when you go in and you distribute in 100% the proportions that the portfolio manager wants. And once you take it out, the portfolio is also in 100% balanced state, you will be getting the same amount of tokens that you deposited back, but that is very, very, very unlikely to, to ever happen. So it's, and, it's very dynamic to always try to balance the, the, the portfolio back to the target weights. Also keep in mind that the portfolio manager earns in these LP tokens, right? So if the portfolio manager wants to collect back and, and, and win from the fees collected, he needs to burn those tokens which is removing liquidity from the portfolio, but it's also a mechanism for the portfolio manager to bring the, the target weights back again, because each transaction always balances back the portfolio. Yeah, I think that's a really nice and neat feature. Now, just stepping away from you know minting and burning, for a lot of people, they just want access to the MTK without providing liquidity. That should be an option there as well, right? Because you maybe speak about, you know, adding the MTKs themselves on different DEXs and how people can go about getting exposure to the index without necessarily providing liquidity or minting and burning. Yes. So like I've mentioned, we are planning on facilitating that swap. Um, we, we have been speaking with a couple of institutional uh, portfolio managers that work in the Cardano ecosystem for them to provide liquidity toward our indexes and creating secondary markets for each index token. But also uh, one part of our DAO strategy, uh, uh, well, from the DAO treasury strategy, will be to continuously be providing liquidity to those, to, to the biggest or the best performing um uh, instruments in the platform and facilitating the swap uh, to the user. So uh, we could be providers of MT to MTK tokens. And once we have that feature ready right here in the platform, you will just be able to buy the MTK token that already gives you access to the underlying assets if you were to burn uh, that uh, MTK token. Perfect. All right. So um, any sort of closing things that you want to go ahead and share with the community when it comes to the demo? If not, I think we'll probably close out on the second Catalyst proposal, which I don't think you've had a chance to jump on just yet. 
Yes, one thing right here, we we have like 25 spots left uh, since we announced more a uh, hundred extra spots to this private testnet. So here's the forms uh, and people can sign up and we'll give you access and whitelist you. And yeah, we have two Catalyst proposals. The first one we've talked in depth about, and I believe here's the third one which is our smart contract audit. Um, we have been speaking to Anastasia Labs and also Sunday Labs. We They are currently looking at our on-chain code and giving us uh, more, more accurate codes uh, regarding our audit. But there's the proposal and we should also be starting that audit pretty soon. I just want to make clear, um, as the same as the... the, the um, the other proposal is that these are things that are not exclusively dependent on us getting funding from Catalyst because these are things that we need to push out. It would be really, really great to get funding from that. Uh, we have uh, a limited amount of, of funding for the project at this point, uh, but uh, we won't go into mainnet without, without us having a public uh, smart contract audit which seems to be something that some projects are just keeping right now. Um, and we want to make clear that our mainnet product will definitely be audited. Yeah, security is definitely um, one of the first and one of the biggest things that I take a look at in this space, right? And without security, there's no trust. Without trust, there is no accountability. So hopefully you guys are able to get funded. I know that that definitely helps. But as you mentioned, with or without Project Catalyst, you guys will still be working to get that audit wrapped up and secured. So Daniel, um, I do want to thank you for joining me. We've touched on the ISPO. As you mentioned, there will be a claim process. You guys will be collaborating with other members in the ecosystem to get that out. I believe it's once Epoch 494, if I'm not mistaken, um, comes Three. around. 493, I apologize. Once that comes around and the actual ISPO does wrap up, we've gotten a chance to review the public test and you talked about how to mint an MTK um, and how to contribute to that. I assume, again, this, the process is probably pretty similar when it comes to burning. I'll leave the links to that down below for anybody who wants to sign up and actually join and participate for the test net. Um, in closing, we did touch on Project Catalyst. For the community, are there any sort of highlights, key takeaways that you want to sort of send us home with? Um, no, I really would invite anyone to reach out and to try our uh, private testnet. Like I said, we still have some spots left and we really want to stress out our system. Public testnet should be coming out uh, in the next couple of weeks and that will be accompanied by an incentivized testnet with a pool of, of Metera tokens that will be claimable the same way as the ISPO tokens will be claimable. Um, so yeah, it's a really exciting moment for us. We are really proud to finally be launching uh, this initial product out there. And, and yeah, we just hope that the Cardano ecosystem likes it and, and, and uses it. Yeah, I think the, the use case here is huge. And I know we didn't talk, talk about it earlier, but with the upcoming bull market that a lot of people are anticipating, when people finally jump into the Cardano ecosystem, using a platform like Matera, grabbing a lot and getting exposure to a lot of assets at once, I think will be very, very important. So um, just one of the many benefits there, obviously there's also earning benefits from portfolio managers, as you mentioned there as well, um, and then potential yield opportunities for anybody who wants to provide liquidity. So quite a bit here. Um, I do appreciate your time and I do appreciate the update. That will do it here for today's video. Links to everything we've discussed so far down below as a part of the show notes. Again, being joined here by Daniel Sampson, one of the founders or co-founders and CEO of the Matera Protocol and Index Protocol building here on Cardano. Ladies and gentlemen, that will do it here. As always, if you guys learn anything along the way or you found this particular video to be helpful, I would really appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up if it's your first time stopping by Dapp Central, where we cover all the biggest builders here in Cardano and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me or Daniel surrounding the Matera protocol, the testnet, the ISPO, or their project catalyst proposals, then please make sure to leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, we'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.